Hi, this is Frank Taylor at Nature at Your Door, and I'm, today I'm here with a box turtle. Probably America's, or at least the East Coast's most familiar reptile, probably the one that most people have seen and interacted with, and maybe even America's most lovable reptile. It's the box turtle. Today's episode is everything you need to know about the Eastern box turtle. Stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. There's nothing more special than walking through the forest and coming across a box turtle, walking quietly across the path. This endearing little organism is probably one of the first memorable interactions with nature that a lot of people have when going on a hike. And they're just so cool to see. And there's something about them. They're so gentle. They're slow moving. That really attracts people. In fact, the box turtle is the state reptile for both Tennessee and North Carolina. So how do you identify a box turtle and know it's a box turtle for sure? Well, it has a very high domed shell or carapace with a very unique colorful patterns on them. They come in various hues of yellow and orange markings. They have a lower hinged plastron. And the plastron on the box turtle is hinged and comes in two parts. The box turtle gets its name box because it can pull its head, legs, and tail completely inside this carapace with the plastron hinged and close itself up completely. Not all turtles can do this. Compare this plastron of a snapping turtle to that of the box turtle. The snapping turtle has a very small plastron, and it's impossible for it to pull its legs and head all the way in and protect it under its shell like the box turtle can do. The shell pattern in a box turtle is also like a fingerprint. It's a very unique to each box turtle, and you can use this to identify box turtles that might show up in your area. These markings on the shell help camouflage the turtle as it moves around hunting and eating on the forest floor in that dappled sunlight. Box turtles have a hooked jaw with a very distinctive overbite. It has partially webbed feet and if you look at the rear feet it has four toes on them. To identify a male from a female box turtle is relatively easy and there's several things you can look for. On the males, the carapace at the top will flare outwards, and this is less prominent on the female. Males have shorter and thicker curved claws, while females have long and straight claws. The plastron on the males is concave, and the reason for this is the male, when breeding, gets up behind the female, and this provides a spot where the curve of the female shell can fit up against the plastron of the male. In the females, the plastron is generally very flat. And really, I think one of the most distinctive things is to look at their eyes. The males have very red or orange eyes, and they're really brilliant to look at. And the females tend to have browner eyes. But this isn't always absolute but it's a pretty good indicator, and that in combination with some of these other factors can give you a pretty certain identification of the turtle's sex. Box turtles can live in a combination of forest and field, and they're often near a source of water. They're very territorial, and they actually will live probably their whole life in an area of about 250 yards by 250 yards. So imagine that a box turtle lives probably its whole life in an area about the size of two football fields. They have a very strong homing instinct. If they get outside of their home range, they're going to make every effort to get back to that area. So you should never, never relocate a box turtle. If you find a box turtle and think, hey, 
man, this isn't a really good place to live. There's too much traffic, too many houses here. He would do so much better in this other forest area. Don't do it because it'll spend its whole life trying to get back to its original range. And also, its probability of survival in a new location is really uh, very minimal, not good at all. A point of discrepancy that people often talk about is whether box turtles can swim or not. They are truly primarily terrestrial turtles in comparison, for example, to a snapping turtle that spends virtually all its life in the water. Box turtles are quite terrestrial. However, they do like being near water. They do use the water. They'll often uh, seek out water or damp places when the summer gets too hot, and they'll often take long soaks in water. They can actually swim. They can choose to float and swim across the surface, or they may choose to uh, dive in and walk along the bottom, but they're definitely very capable of surviving in water and have the ability to swim as well as partially webbed feet. Box turtles are true omnivores and I've heard lots of stories where people will find a box turtle, take it home and put it in a cardboard box and give it some lettuce. Well, in addition to eating some of the vegetable matter and plant matter, box turtles will eat slugs and worms and snails and insects and small amphibians. They're truly opportunists. They'll take advantage of berries or fallen fruit that falls in season. But keep in mind that juveniles tend to lean more to the animal part of the diet, and as they get older, they'll move more to eating a, a diet more based on plant material. Box turtles will live about 25 to 35 years in the wild, but some have been shown to live up to over a hundred years. You can get an idea of the age of a box turtle by looking at their, their scoots or those uh, uh, sections on the shell that have the color patterns in them. And you can see rings that are actually growth rings, which are similar to the rings that you could see on a tree, but not as accurate. However, Counting these can give you a suggestion and an indication of its age, but also keep in mind that some of those rings will actually wear off and be replaced later. So it's not a perfect indicator, but it does give a good idea of the age of a turtle. A lot of people ask, well, where do these box turtles go in the winter? Well, they have to, to dig down they can't survive the, the cold temperatures. They have to get into a place where, where they won't freeze. So they'll dig down underneath leaf litter, under logs, and get as deep as they possibly can. The kind of overwintering, hibernation-like uh, activity by turtles is called brumation. So turtles will brumate during the winter where they'll become very sluggish and active their body temperature goes down, their metabolic rate goes down, and they enter a state of torpor. And they'll live off stored fat in a very low metabolic rate through the winter, deep in the ground where they can survive freezing temperatures. Box turtles will usually mate and reproduce in the spring. Females will lay two to eight eggs in a clutch usually once per year. Their nest temperature, where they put the eggs, and how warm the soil is where they buried those eggs, will influence the sex of the offspring. And it appears that the warmer temperatures will lead to more females being born from those eggs. The colder the temperature, the more males will be born. The eggs, of course, are very nutritious and sought after by a lot of different organisms like raccoons and skunks and possums that will try to find those eggs and dig them up and eat them. There's a fair amount of predation on box turtles by all sorts of uh, mammals and invertebrates when they're small. And once they get to a, a certain size and they can pull themselves in their shells, they're less, far less susceptible to predation. 
It's fun to watch box turtles move across a variety of uh, environments. They're like little all-terrain vehicles <laughs> moving across and climbing across things. Frequently, you'll see a box turtle crossing the road. And if you do, and you want to stop, and you can safely stop without causing a traffic accident or putting yourself at risk, always consider in which direction the box turtle was moving and move him across the road to the side that he was pointing to. So many people see a box turtle and they go, oh my gosh, can we keep it as a pet? Can we take it at home? And the advice for that is please don't do it. Box turtles are declining in numbers due to uh, habitat loss, due to poaching by the pet trade, and also by collisions with cars and things when they're crossing the roads. So the best thing to do is when you see a box turtle is enjoy the moment, watch him, enjoy seeing him, and let him go on his way. Box turtles that are taken home really are not as easy to keep as pets as people think. They need very specific light and temperature and food and moisture regimes. And also, there's a risk turtles carrying salmonella. So for that reason, they don't make such great pets. It's actually illegal in almost every state now to take a box turtle out of the environment and keep him. And a lot of people think, well, I'll just keep him and feed him and take care of him for a while, and then I'll release him back into the wild. But a lot of times turtles that are kept in captivity lose some of their abilities to survive in the wild and it's just never a good idea to take a turtle home as a pet and try to keep it and then release it later so keep the wild in the wild try to overcome that that desire to to take home this cool little turtle and bring him home as a pet is really best for the population for the ecology for the reproduction, for the turtle, to leave them in the wild. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this episode of Nature at Your Door with this Eastern box turtle. I hope you learned something new today and added to your nature knowledge. And remember, if you like what I do on this channel, please give me a like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. I love hearing from my viewers. And remember, I cover all things nature, from frogs, toads, snakes, turtles, the myriapoda, insects, trees, wildflowers, and fungi. I cover all the things you might encounter just outside your door. So thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door with the Eastern Box Turtle.